I'm going to take you through a very simple process that you can follow to build a monthly watch list every single month. To build this watch list, I'm going to be using our monthly watch list scan. This uses seasonal analysis data to then build a watch list of stocks which are likely to outperform for that particular month. Let me show you how this scan works. If you hop inside of Thinkorswim once you import the scan, you'll see three different filters here. The first filter is our seasonal analysis filter. I've set this on the weekly time frame so we can access a little bit more historical data. And the scan is simply looking for two different things. The first is making sure that at least 80% of the time, and this is on that weekly time frame, which looks back about three years. So 80% over three years of the time, meaning more often than not, that particular month, which in this case is the month of March, closes above where it opened. So I'm looking here for frequency of this particular month closing above where it opened. And as I make this video, it's currently 3-2, meaning we're towards the beginning of the month. I still have an opportunity to participate in this trade. The second part of this scan is checking to make sure that this month is an overall positive month, meaning it closes above and that move every single month over the average of this case three months uh, since we have three years worth of data is a positive number. So that's what we're looking for here. Two different components, which tells us that, hey, the month of March is a good month, at least uh, historically for this particular stock. And you can dive a little bit deeper. Now, what's interesting is while the scan tab here has some limitations on that historical look back period, you can expand that on the chart tab by loading in the max available data, which then allows you to do a little bit deeper dive. So this scan lets you start with this much larger watch list of the New York Stock Exchange stocks and reduce it down dramatically to a good starting point. Now, these two filters are the market pulse filters, and you'll notice that their time frames are different, the daily time frame and the weekly time frame. That's to try and find where we have trend on our side, and in this case, across a variety of time frames. Two in this case, two longer term time frames. If you're looking for more shorter term trading, you can modify these two particular scripts, but I would leave the seasonal analysis one set to that weekly time frame to access more data. Now, if you run this scan, you'll be left with 41 stocks. That's what you see here, 41 stocks. So from this point, you now have to do a little bit of manual research. So I saved this as a watch list and I call this watch list temp since I don't plan on really using this watch list in the future. The only reason I saved this as a watch list is so I could connect this to my charts 1-1 and it becomes a lot easier to now cycle through my charts and have this symbol automatically connect. Now when I go through the charts here, here's what I'm looking for. I want to see where not only is our current month, which in this case, March, is a green label, but I'm also looking for places in which April and May, so the two following months, are also green. That tells me I have some room for the stock. This trend, this seasonality, is likely to continue not just for the current month, but for this next period of time. That's what I'm looking for. This requires a little bit more manual research. So for example, here you'll see AGI, doesn't stand out. March is a positive month. This is looking pretty solid, but April, May starts to teeter off a little bit. Another thing that stands out is the amount of data. If you take a look at how much data you have available for access, here I'm going back to the max available period, but if we take a look, that only goes back to about 2011. In many stocks, you'll notice that we have a lot more historical data available to us. For example, if we were to come inside of MasterCard and I loaded in the max available data that we have here, you'll see we go back to 2006. So the amount of data will influence how many data points are being used to calculate these labels up here. I'm going to spare you the process of this research. I've already done that and I've summarized the table here for us. So let's go through the results. Now we had 41 stocks to start off with. That's what you see on this left hand side. And from these 41 stocks, I tried to reduce this down to a list in which we had those months in which we had uh, March, April, May all being positive, or there was some reason that this stood out. Now that took me down to a much smaller watch list of about 20 stocks. Now 20 is still a large number, but for those of you that are active another traders, another one was your at and with the telecom industry. Right one that I, these are the groupings that stood out. 
12 of these 20 stocks all fit inside of the utility sector. And I thought that was somewhat interesting. So we could really just replace this with XLU. So one ETF plus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight stocks that we have. Now, out of these eight stocks, I tried to group them into different sectors, of course. XLU is the one that stands out with most of these stocks falling into that bucket. Another one was AT&T with the telecom industry. One that I thought was somewhat interesting, which I called climate, not necessarily climate, but it was ECL, uh, Republic, and Waste Management. This grouping of stocks was somewhat interesting to see um, as being strong movers for the month of March, April, and May. We'll take a look at that on the charts. Then we had MasterCard. Then we had Wheaton, uh, Precious Metals, Yum for Dining. And then finally, Amtech, which I grouped in this other bucket. These are what I think are a good starting point for a watch list of places you'd be looking at to build entries both for day and swing trading. If you come into the chart now and we take a look at the final stocks, we have XLU, you take a look at March, April, and May. We have our green uh, labels all suggesting that these are which months in which our seasonality is on our side. On our side. Uh, the month closes above where it opened and we have the overall percentage move being a positive move as well. So XLU stands out here. After XLU, I'll look at AME next. AME looks interesting with both the market pulse along with March, April, May. Also stands out here. I like AME. Then we had our three climate stocks. ECL, don't like the fact that we made a new all-time high. However, extensions still above us. The Fibonacci extensions giving us some price targets. I think this is better for a day trade unless we were to fill the gap where it looks better for a swing trade. Otherwise, very hard to get excited here. Then we had Republic, same idea as ECL, and Waste Management, same idea as ECL. So those um, three grouping of stocks, I think, were very similar in that they were more interesting for day trades. And then we had MasterCard. MasterCard, the chart here, I was not too keen on. It was hard to get excited about this near its all-time highs, and that too with the long wick. But it is one in which we have March, April, May also standing out in terms of seasonality. So maybe if we had a day trade or a volatility box entry. And then finally, we had Yum. Yum, same thing, all-time high. And then Wheaton Precious Metals looked a little bit better than some of the other stocks. March and April were better here. But May started to teeter off, so I still added it in since we were better than that all-time high that we um, saw in some of these other stocks. So this is that final watch list that I think would be a good starting point in which seasonality suggests that we should continue to see these stocks tend to rise. I think being able to use XLU as a sector to replace nearly 12 stocks here is a nice hack. Or if, you, nice hack. Or if you wanted to focus on the just one months, sector months, for the coming XLU month plus these months, stocks stand XLU out, plus and that might be a good starting point if the rest with a lot of them near these all-time highs becomes a lot less interesting. In fact, XLU also stands out because we are near our Fibonacci levels. And if we were to break outside of this long-term bearish channel, I think that would make for a nice trade going back towards our extensions closer to that 8460 mark. I hope you found this video helpful. For those of you looking to build a monthly watch list, or at least even learning the process of how you could go about building a watch list at the beginning of every single month. Take care, everyone. Good luck trading, and I'll see you in our next update.